Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This video is the second part of a reading of the paper Genealogy and Rectification of the Lesser Ritual of the Pentagram as a site of Jewish, Christian, Neo-Pagan, Esoteric Intersectionality by Carrie Seeline. Section 2. Vitriol. Spelled V-I-T-R-I-O-L, this alchemical formula is an abbreviation of the Latin phrase visita interiore terre rectificando in venis occultum lapide, meaning visit the interior of the earth. By rectification, you will discover the occult stone. Sometime in the 15th century, a fictional alchemist named Basilius Valentinus is alleged to have adapted the common name for sulfuric acid, vitriol, into a verbal formula, like a spell or instruction, to affect the perfect alchemical interactions of mercury, sulfur, and salt, capable of transmuting base metal into fine. According to Valentinus, or rather his late 16th, early 17th century creators, it is through rectification, or rectificando, that one achieves the desired alchemical end with the materials found within the Earth's core. Rectification may be interpreted as repeated experimentation, refinement of technique or material, but in any case points to a process by which elements are transformed by the will and practice of the chemist. The occult or hidden philosopher's stone affects the changes without itself changing and is thus the key to immortality, or as the sentence concludes, verum medicinam, medicinam a true medicine. But the notion of alchemical transmutation can be expanded to include the cross-cultural, seemingly immortal movement of ritual practice, language, symbolism, and effect. By what alchemy, then, does a ritual come into being? How does magical ritual, for example, flow in and out, through and across cultures? How is it transformed in the process? What is necessary for its temporal and geospatial endurance? And given that cross-cultural movement of any kind takes place within historical contexts of colonial domination of, and hegemony, religious, military, and otherwise, themselves involved in processes of mutability. This paper explores these questions by tracing a genealogy of the lesser ritual of the pentagram, or LRP. This genealogy does not, strictly speaking, follow direct paths of historic transmission, but rather locates sparks of thought as they flare into expression in a multiplicity of traditions at various points in time. These flares signal the persistence and transmutation of foundational Western religious ideas, what Robert, Robert Yella has called semiotic ideologies, such as temple, priest, sacrifice and word, and point to their magical efficacy, having been in use continuously for so many millennia. The LRP is perhaps the most widely practiced magical rite in the neo-pagan world today, with variants among such disparate groups as Thelemites, Aleister Crowley-derived practices, Wiccans, Gerald Gardner-derived practices, and Golden Dawn ceremonial magicians, classical Western esoteric practices derived from European occult or manicism. A short ritual of elemental banishment or invocation, the LRP is appropriate for establishing or dismantling magical working space. Depending on the construction of the pentagrams, the magician banishes or invokes the four elements of earth, water, fire, and air as necessary. The fifth element is the living spirit or divine indwelling presence that enters and empowers the magician. The six-rayed star in the center column of the working space. The LRP can be used as a standalone ritual or as the opening of a more complicated working. It is easy to learn with rich oral, visual, tactile, and kinesthetic com components. 
typically is the it is the first spell new magicians master as neophytes. If success is thy proof, then the LRP has proven its practical reliability for over a hundred years. Like any successful recipe, it has been handed on and circulates, each generation adapting it to a particular cultural or historical moment. As a product of the free appropriation of non-Christian traditions in Christian-dominated Europe, the LRP carries with it faint but unmistakable Jewish traces. The LRP employs Jewish Hebrew divine names as found in Torah and daily prayer, summons the archangels in accordance with rabbinic midrash and bedtime prayer, and suggests the embodied Kabbalistic tree of life in the so-called Kabbalistic cross. This project investigates the Jewish genealogical strata that provide the magical foundation for this ritual that can create or dissolve sacred space-time. One byproduct, a sort of magical child, or the excess of exuberance of this investigation is a rectified LRP, which includes the full textual language to which traditional versions only allude. By replacing the highly artificial magical language of esoteric incantation with the highly artificial natural language of the poetry of the Davidic court and other more recent sources from the late antique Roman and medieval European Jewish worlds, the rectified LRP restores something that was never really lost. By delving deeply into the interior, so to speak, of the ritual's history and mythology, its earth, the secret stone of the ritual's power is revealed and strengthened in the revelation. Having clarified the various strata of the Jewish elements of the LRP, and having revealed its Jewish contours, the project concludes with the argument that much contemporary Western magical practice not only derives from Jewish sources such as the Book of Chronicles, Rabbinic Midrash, and the Zohar, but also can be said to constitute a new form of Jewish magical practice. One, however, that takes place outside of formal Judaism. By practicing rituals and studying texts that appropriate and synthesize Jewish sources, one becomes Jewish without the necessity of personal Jewish antecedents or connections to any particular strand of previous Jewish cultural imaginaries. This is a semiotic practice that recontextualizes ancient Jewish words and symbols for post-religious and post-secular magical ritual use, a use that is also acknowledged and practiced within more directly linked Jewish genealogical communities, such as Chabad Hasidism, and practiced but unacknowledged in mainstream reform, conservative, modern Orthodox, and renewal Judaism. This sort of genealogy is a fittingly alchemical method for the study of magical practice. One discovers the occult stone, that is, the alchemical ingredient that turns base metal into gold deep in the heart of the Earth's interior, to which one arrives through a process of rectification. The first historical critical movement of rectification is from mythology to history, as mythology provides the cover for historical religious innovation. The second hermeneutically constructive movement brings history back to mythology in order to follow through the magical in this case, ideas and techniques related to particular strands of the cultural web. These movements take us to the Judaic roots of Western magical practice, as well as carry Judaic theurgy into new contexts. This twofold process of rectification works simultaneously to transmute two ills. The first is the Christian esoteric tradition's lingering anti-Judaism, a defensive posture rooted in the cultural misappropriation of Jewish language and techniques. The second is contemporary Judaism's disassociation from its own theurgic past and present unwillingness to actively engage the potential of Jewish magic to revivify mainstream diasporic Judaism as well as dismantle Israeli state Judaism. This project grew out of a year-long, March 2016 to 2017, study of the origins of Thelema, the magical system developed by Aleister Crowley from Jewish and Christianized Kabbalah of the Golden Dawn and Rosicrucian esoteric traditions of Northern and Western Europe, 
South Asian Hindu and Buddhist practices, his Victorian era English fundamentalist Christian upbringing, and his own intelligent and highly educated imagination. As mentioned above, the first part of this paper presents the LRP and explores its mythological history as a magical practice received in Rosicrucian-derived traditions. The second part analyzes the ritual's historical mythology as a combination of potent Jewish spells that serve to summon the deity into the body of the mage and the ritual space. I cannot provide a survey of the work done on the LRP as the academic study of Thelema is in its infancy and that of esotericism in general is in its toddlerhood, but I would like to thank Nathan Bjorgi most gratefully for organizing the vast materials comprising the histories of the Golden Dawn and Thelema and for presenting them to me with clarity, coherence, and connectivity. Love is the law, love under will.